Richard Louis Proniker. May 4, 1916 to April 20, 2003, was an American self-educated naturalist, conservationist, writer, and wildlife photographer who, from the age of about 51, lived alone for nearly 30 years, 1968-1998 in the mountains of Alaska in a log cabin that he constructed by hand near the shore of Twin Lakes. Pronica hunted, fished, raised and gathered much of his own food, and also had supplies flown in occasionally. He documented his activities in journals and on film and also recorded valuable meteorological and natural data. The journals and film were later used by others to write books and produce documentaries about his time in the wilderness. Pronica bequeathed his cabin to the National Park Service upon his death and it was included in the National Register of Historic Places four years later. The cabin is a popular attraction of Lake Clark National Park. William Christian Pronica, 1880-1972, served in World War I, and made his living as a house painter, carpenter and well driller. His mother, Laura, 1884-1966, was a homemaker and gardener. His parents married in December 1909 and had three daughters and four sons. Robert, Helen, Laureen, Richard, Dick, Florence, Paul, and Raymond, Jake. The year of Pronica's birth is often given as 1917 but Social Security and Census records note Richard Louis Pronica was born in Primrose, Harrison Township, Lee County, Iowa. On May 4, 1916, Pronica completed primary school in Primrose, but left high school after two years because he did not enjoy it. Until 1939, he worked in proximity to Primrose driving tractors, working with farm equipment, and doing typical chores Iowa family farms required at the time. He also admired motorcycles and obtained a Harley Davidson as a teen. Pronica enlisted in the United States Navy the day after the attack on Pearl Harbor and served as a carpenter. He spent almost two years at Pearl Harbor and was later stationed in San Francisco waiting for a new ship assignment. After hiking on a mountain near San Francisco he contracted rheumatic fever and was hospitalized at Norco Naval Hospital for six months. During his convalescence the war ended and he was given a medical discharge from the Navy in 1945. According to one of his biographers and friend, Sam Keith, the illness was very revealing for Pronica, who decided to devote the rest of his life to the strength and health of his body. Following his discharge from the Navy, Pronica went to school to become a diesel mechanic. The combination of his high intelligence, adaptability, and strong work ethic helped him become a skilled technician. Though adept at his trade, Pronica eventually yielded to his love of nature and moved to Oregon to work at a sheep ranch. He moved to Shuyak Island, Alaska, in 1950. For several years, he worked as a heavy equipment operator and repairman on the naval air station at Kodiak. 
Pronica spent the next several years working throughout Alaska as both a salmon fisherman and diesel technician. He worked for the Fish and Wildlife Service at King Salmon on the Alaska Peninsula. His skills as a technician were well known and sought after, and he was able to save for retirement. On May 21, 1968, Kronika arrived at his new place of retirement at Twin Lakes. Beforehand, he made arrangements to use a cabin on Upper Twin Lake owned by retired Navy Captain Spike Carruthers and his wife Hope of Kodiak, in whose care he had left his camper. This cabin was well situated on the lake and close to the site that Pronica chose for the construction of his own cabin. Pronica's cabin is handmade and is notable for its fine craftsmanship as a result of his carpentry and woodworking skills. He also made 8mm films covering its construction. Most of the structure and the furnishings are made from materials in and around the site, from the gravel taken from the lake bed to create the cabin's base, to the trees he selected, cut down, and then hand cut with interlocking joints to create the walls and roof rafter framing. The fireplace and flue were made from stones he dug from around the site and mortared in place to create the chimney and hearth. He used metal containers for food storage. One-gallon cans were cut into basin shapes and buried below the frost line. This ensured that fruit and perishables could be stored for prolonged periods in the cool earth yet still be accessible when the winter months froze the ground above them. Pronica's friend, Bush pilot and missionary Leon Reed, Babe, Alsworth, returned periodically by seaplane or ski plane to bring mail food and orders that Pronica placed through him to Sears. Pronica remained at Twin Lakes for the next 16 months, after which he briefly went home to visit relatives and secure more supplies. He returned to Twin Lakes the following spring and remained there for most of the next 30 years traveling to the contiguous United States only occasionally to visit his family. He made a film record of his solitary life, which was later re-edited and made into the documentary Alone in the Wilderness. In 2011 a sequel was produced after enough footage for at least two more programs was discovered. Alone in the Wilderness Part 2 premiered on December 2, 2011. Pronica's cabin was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2007. The site is a popular attraction for many who want to personally experience parts of Pronica's life and values. In 1999, at age 83, Kronika left his cabin and moved to Hemet, California, where he lived the remainder of his life with his brother Raymond, Jake, Kronika. He died of a stroke on April 20, 2003. At the age of 86, he willed his cabin to the National Park Service and it remains a popular visitor attraction in the still remote Twin Lakes region of Lake Clark National Park. Sam Keith, who came to know Pronica at the Kodiak Naval Station and went on numerous hunting and fishing trips with him, suggested that Pronica's journals might be the basis for a good book. In 1973, Keith published the book One Man's Wilderness, an Alaskan odyssey, based on Pronica's journals and photography. 
Kronika however alleged that Keith had changed some things to embellish the story. Such as writing that Pronika had assumed a role as king of bears and wielded power over them. After years in print it was reissued in a new format in 1999. Winning that year's National Outdoor Book Award, Noba. A hardcover, commemorative edition, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the publication of One Man's Wilderness, was published by Alaska Northwest Books in 2013. In 2003, some of the copyrighted text from the book and some of Pronika's film were used with permission in the documentary Alone in the Wilderness which began appearing on U.S. public television. It follows Pronika's life as he builds the cabin from the surrounding natural resources and includes his film footage and narration of wildlife, weather, and the natural scenery while he goes about his daily routine over the course of the winter months. In 2005, the National Park Service and the Alaska Natural History Association published more readings from One Man's Wilderness, another volume of Pronika's journal entries. The book, edited by John Branson, a longtime Lake Clark National Park employee and friend of Pronika, covers the years when the park was established. Pronika had a very close relationship with the Park Service, assisting them in filming sensitive areas and notifying them if poachers were in the area. The early years, the journals of Richard L. Pronika 1967-1973 was published by Alaska Geographic in 2010. As with more readings from One Man's Wilderness, the volume is edited by John Branson. This collection of journals covers Proenica's first years at Twin Lakes, including the construction of his cabin and cache. The journal entries overlap those in Sam Keith's edited collection of some of Proenica's journals, One Man's Wilderness. An Alaskan Odyssey. But unlike that book, in which Keith frequently modified Pronika's writing style, the early years presents Pronika's journals with minimal or no modification. In 2017, a Richard Pronika Museum exhibit was opened at the Donaldson Public Library in Donaldson, Iowa near Pronika's hometown of Primrose. The exhibit features a replica of Pronika's cabin, some of his writings, and other artifacts. In 2016 and 2018, respectively, A Life in Full Stride, the journals of Richard L. Pronika 1981-1985 and Your Life Here is an Inspiration. The journals of Richard L. Pronika 1986-1991 were published. In 2020, the fifth and final collection of Pronika's journals, reaching the end of the trail, the journals of Richard L. Pronika 1992-2000 was published. These three final collections were published by the Friends of Donaldson Public Library, the Richard Pronica Museum, and were edited by John Branson.